What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the crack a pack series today We are opening up a pack of magic origins surprisingly not something that we open up too often on this uh, This series which is a little bit weird because it's uh, I mean it's a fairly new set It's easy to get your hands on but these are picked randomly, so I guess that's just how the things go. Uh, of course, we're gonna look at this from a uh, pack one, pick one limited perspective. So we're actually gonna look at this, go through every single card, try and figure out what our actual pack one, pick one would be if we were drafting this set. Uh, I didn't actually draft much of this set. I did play at the time, but I didn't get the opportunity to draft. Uh, it is a semi-corset kind of feel though, so hopefully it won't be too difficult to actually figure out what our pack one pick one would be. Uh, but with that, we are going to start with a Crow and Jailer, so it's a 1-1 one, one for one white, and you can pay two and a white, tap it, and tap target creature. These are really, really common uh, card effects that we see actually quite a lot, especially in these core sets, which are tappers. So these are really, really powerful, able to tap down the most important creature on your opponent's side of the field is a huge, huge benefit to you as the player. Uh, I really like this card. I really like cards like this. Uh, it's a little expensive at three mana to actually do the effect. Uh, you do have to leave open three mana, which is a little bit inefficient, I would say, but uh, still pretty powerful. Uh, definitely a card that I would not mind having. Having, uh, in a set like this. Uh, Dark Dabbling is an instant for two and a black. Regenerate target creature, draw a card. This also has spell mastery, so if there are two or more instants and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, you can regenerate each other creature you control as well. Similar to like the overload mechanic in a weird way. Um, I don't like this uh, generally. It's just like a save my creature kind of card. That's really bad. If it came with like a combat trick a little bit more, like some extra power or something like that, I'd be a little more into it, but because this literally just regenerates a creature, it doesn't seem all that good. Yes, it replaces itself, but the ability itself just isn't all that exciting. So would not be interested in that. Chandra's Fury is an instant for four and a red. Deals four damage to target player and one damage to each creature that that player controls. This is very, very good in my opinion. Four damage to target creature, or to target player, excuse me, is a huge chunk of damage, honestly. Uh, that's four damage that you don't have to be dealing with your creatures or anything like that. And if you're in a red deck, uh, it's going to be really easy to get them down pretty low pretty quickly. So this card could really just win you the game. Uh, on top of that, deals one damage to each creature that player controls, which is going to not necessarily wipe the board by any means. It's only one damage, but it is going to deal with stuff like the Acro and Jailer, low to the ground kind of effects or kind of creatures, uh, which are really, really important to get through when you're in that kind of red deck wins or burn style deck. So I really like this card. This is definitely uh, up there as, as far as the pick so far. A uh, Hitchclaw Recluse is a 1-4 for 2 and a green, and it has Reach. Pretty straightforward card. Most spiders do have Reach, so it's not that surprising that it does. Uh, it's just okay. It's a blocker. Uh, I mean, it's fine. It's going to live for a while. It deals with a lot, which is good, but it's a little bit filler. Um, this is obviously, you kind of have to treat this as a little bit of a corset style. I mean, this is kind of a corset, so it's it's not going to be the most like high power level set, is what I will say. Uh, but, I mean, it's fine. It's an okay three drop. It does not beat the Fury, in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, negate is an instant for one and a blue target, uh, or excuse me, counter target non-creature spell. Uh, this, not that exciting and limited. If this was essence scatter, it would be much more appealing. Creatures are much more of what you will be seeing uh, in the limited formats. Generally speaking, you have more creatures than just instant sorceries, things like that. Uh, just because most of your games are going to be one on the board, so you want to have a high creature count. Uh, and so negate's not always going to find a target, which is unfortunate because it is a very efficient and powerful card. It's definitely one that if you are in a blue deck, you would probably maybe not always run, but definitely want to have access to in case you're up against a deck that is kind of a spells matters deck. You want to be able to pull this in from the sideboard to be able to deal with it. So I really like negate. Uh, unfortunately, not the best card in limited, so not going to be the pick here. Uh, Suppression Bonds, Enchant Non-Land Permanent uh, for three and a white. The Enchanted Permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities cannot be activated. What's really key about this card is that it is a non-land permanent, so it's not just a creature. 
Uh, you can obviously target a creature for four mana. You can basically take it off uh, of contention for anything, essentially, which is great. It's a good, good ability. Um, but it's four mana for a reason, that being you can target anything. So uh, if you're targeting an enchantment that has a activated ability on it, well, that enchantment's abilities can't be activated anymore. It also can't attack or block, fun fact. But um, in general, this is actually a really, really powerful card. Really, really like this. I don't know if I like it more than Chandra's Fury. I'm going to keep them both together for now uh, because they do kind of fall into the same removal vein. So, uh, Veteran Sidearm is an equipment uh, for two mana. The equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and the cost is only one mana. This is a pretty just generic equipment card. Uh, it's not something that you want to take early, but it is something that can kind of fit into any deck. So, it's not bad late, uh, late in the pack to just kind of pick up one, maybe two of these, just to have access to. You don't necessarily have to run them, but uh, having one maybe is just kind of a filler card if you're short on playables or something like that is a perfectly fine uh, choice. I like cards like this. It's nice to have them in your card pool just in case, uh, but they're definitely not first pickable by any means. Uh, Fire Fiend Elemental is three and a red for a three two. It does have haste, so it's able to attack and tap uh, as soon as it comes into play. And it also has a Renown 1, so when this creature deals combat damage to a player, if it is not Renowned already, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and it becomes Renowned. So, uh, essentially, if it gets in for an attack, uh, if it deals combat damage to a player, I should say, not just attacks, uh, it can become a 4-3, which is really, really good. Um, and it has haste. Seems like a really, really strong pick for sure. Uh, it, the danger here is that for 4 mana, you're starting off with a 3-2 which means it's going to be probably a little outclassed uh, with some of the other creatures. If if you're at four mana, hopefully you're getting a little bit more power out of it. So a card like this hopefully will be able to get in for damage. If it doesn't, it's going to be really, really bad though. So uh, it's a little bit hit or miss in my opinion. I think I'd rather take a safe removal pick over a card like this. So just my opinion. Uh, Undead Servant is a 3-2 for three and a black. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield for each card named Undead Servant in your graveyard. So, uh, cards like these are really, really interesting uh, that rely on other cards with the exact same name. Uh, so you want as many of these as possible if you are going down this strategy, but if you don't end up getting many, it's really not worth it. So. Obviously with a card like this, uh, it's a 3-2 for 4, so it is kind of on par with the Fire Fiend Elemental, but you'd really want to at least get one zombie out of this. So uh, you're kind of in a self, maybe a self mill strategy, but definitely like you need two or three of these to make this worth it. Um, I don't know. I'm not sold on it. Uh, if you are going to go into this, pick it early, I guess, but I am not sold. Uh, Scrapskin Drake is a 2-3 for 2 and a blue. It has flying, and it can block only creatures with flying. Generally speaking, uh, if you're in the blue-white flyers deck, which tends to be where the flyers deck goes, cards like this are perfectly fine. Uh, it's a 2-3 for 3, which means it's pretty much on par for a normal flyer. And if you are the flyers deck, ideally you're not going to be blocking very often. So uh, I'm actually okay with cards like this. Uh, this is not something I'd pick over the other cards that we've seen already. Just our removal is a little bit too good in this pack, I think. Uh, and so not a card I would pick over the other ones, but as a three drop flyer, perfectly fine. Definitely one that I would run. Uh, our first uncommon is Swift Reckoning, so it's one and a white for a sorcery. If there are two, uh, excuse me, it says destroy target tapped creature, but... It does have spell mastery, so if there are two or more instants or sorcery cards in your graveyard, you may cast it as though it had flash. So you can play this at instant speed if you meet the requirement for spell mastery. Uh, cards like this are okay. Uh, destroy target tapped creature means they had to have tapped it first. That's a very important thing to note. I always forget that with cards like this. Uh, it's really annoying. I think the card was summary dismissal uh, in Magic Wars that Tyler and I did, and I always forgot that it had to be a tapped creature. And so I would play it and I'd be like, crap, no, I can't do that. <laughs> so I had to take it back. I took that out of the edit, sorry about it. But uh, cards like this are very, very powerful and efficient, but it does rely on the creature being tapped, which means you're gonna have to have either taken a hit from it or have an activated ability on it, do something like that. That being said, it is very efficient. Uh, I don't think I would take it over the other cards though, to be honest. Uh, sp specifically Suppression Bonds, I think is kind of where I'm leaning, uh, just because it literally hits anything, which is great. 
Uh, Scab Goliath is a 6-9 for 6 mana. Uh, as an additional cost to cast it, exile 2 creature cards from your graveyard, and it does have Trample. Uh, this is a very powerful card. This is what we call a bomb for the uncommon level, uh, which is very, very good. Two cards from your graveyard, not the biggest deal. Uh, exile them, that's not a huge deal. If you've got enough creatures in your deck, doesn't really matter. So I really like this card. I think honestly, so far, this is kind of the pick. It's just a big bomb. Uh, and you can't really say no to big bombs. Remember bread, everybody. Uh, definitely a good card. <laughs> Uh, I Blight Massacre is a sorcery for two and two black non-elf creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn. There is a very solid elf deck uh, that is green black and very very powerful I would say if you get the right cards. Generally speaking tribal decks are a little bit tricky and limited uh, because some of the cards are not just good in the tribal deck but also good elsewhere. This is one that is only good in the tribal deck therefore I would not pick it first. I would pick the other cards like Shaman of the Pact which is really really good kind of only in the elf deck but uh, it's definitely a flagship card and a reason to be in the elf deck this is just really good removal so I'm not a huge fan of this card unless you're in that deck uh, and then our rare is flame shadow conjuring so it's an enchantment for three and a red when a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control you may pay one red if you do put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature that token gains haste and then you exile it at the beginning of your next end step in a red deck, I'm not a fan of, like, of a card like this. Uh, you have to take a turn off to play it. It is not dealing damage right away. Not for me in red. So I will go ahead and throw that one out right now. I think for me, it's a pretty easy Scab Goliath. Uh, normally, I'm not a fan of a card like this uh, just because it requires a little bit more of a setup cost, but it is a late game bomb. Uh, and by that, that point in time, it's probably going to be pretty easy for you to have two cards in your graveyard that you can exile, two creatures in particular. So. Definitely the card I would pick. Uh, feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below, as always. But uh, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Turn that little bell on. You'll get notified every single time we post a video. But with that, I am going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.